Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In this video we're going to be taking a look at a NASA mission called New Horizons and we're going to be talking a little bit more about it, specifically some interesting facts about this really awesome mission that was completed, or actually not completed, but reached its uh, exciting part in the summer of 2015 and it still actually hasn't finished, it's still going to be going on until at least 2026. Uh, and is going to be exploring other uh, dwarf planets. But let's actually take a look at this mission and let's start with the... We're going to try to recreate it actually from scratch from 2006, January 19, 2006, which is when it was actually launched. And this is sort of like what New Horizons would be uh, like when it was still orbiting around our planet. Now let's... Uh, we're going to go right here and open a new simulation, a new solar system simulation. And we're going to roll it back the time to 2006, and this is January 19th, and we're going to start it paused. All right, so excellent. Here we are. So let's talk about this mission, what it was all about, how it would start it, and why it's so exciting, and what is so cool about it. Now, our Earth, for some reason, is frozen. Let's ignore that fact. And let's actually go into the add body right here and we're going to add uh, horizon new horizons missions at a low earth orbit right about here all right that's good enough let's zoom into it and talk about the first exciting thing now one of the most exciting things about it is that it was actually the fastest launch of any spacecraft ever. Um, the, when it actually escaped the Earth atmosphere, it reached velocity of approximately 16.26 kilometers per second. That is actually uh, escape velocity from our solar system, and it was able to do that using uh, its own engines. So it's essentially, it actually escaped the the Earth um, gravitational pull and flew into the space and so we're gonna go into motion right here and set now unfortunately this game doesn't actually show you the orbital velocity it only shows you total velocity so i can only guess that this might be around let's just say 44 kilometers per second uh that's about uh, sounds about right and essentially let's uh, decelerate time a little bit and watch it escape the earth gravitational pull so this is what it saw when it left the planet uh now the interesting thing about it is that when it left, Pluto was still considered to be a planet, but by, by the time that it escaped Pluto, by the time it reached Jupiter, Pluto has been downgraded to a dwarf planet, so poor New Horizons probably went dull, because it left to explore the ninth planet, but by the time it reached Pluto, it was no longer considered to be a planet because of reasons I'll explain in the next video. There's actually many really important reasons why Pluto is no longer a planet. Now, its first destination was actually Jupiter, so New Horizons' uh, first planet that it visited was Jupiter. And now, the reason why it did that is, well, there's two reasons, really. One was to take a picture, which it did, and two is to actually gain some speed from it. Uh, this is a maneuver called um, gravitational slingshot. Uh, basically, or also known as gravity assist, basically what, it, what this maneuver does is it uses the gravitational field of a large planet, in this case Jupiter, to propel the spacecraft even further and basically to gain extra velo velocity. And so what this new, uh, spacecraft did is gain approximately 4 kilometers per second from, uh, from Jupiter, basically by the time it reached it. And so here we are flying toward Jupiter and as we approach it, we're going to increase our speed by about 4 kilometers per second. Now, unfortunately, I may have actually missed it a little bit, uh, because I didn't really do any specific calculations here, and also because um, I, I can't really set exact velocity, but I can probably actually decrease this a little bit. Let's decrease to 17, let's see what happens. Might be able to reach it that way. Uh, oh, look at that. Approaching it a little bit, a little bit slower, maybe. Approaching it closer. And here we go. Now, this is the interesting fact number uh, three. And the fact here is that um, when it was approaching Jupiter and when it actually passed in Jupiter, it got to take a picture of Io, one of the satellites of Jupiter. And when it saw Io, it actually witnessed the first extraterrestrial eruption ever. This is the first time we've seen a volcano erupt on another planet and we actually took a picture of it. So that was pretty cool. And so here we're going to actually get a little bit more speed and proceed 
to actually probably even more 17 kilometers per second and proceed to uh, our next destination which is of course uh, Pluto now at this point New Horizons actually went to sleep and stayed in hibernation for a few years and in between Jupiter and uh, Pluto nothing really happened and while I was waiting to reach Pluto which I hope I'm reaching let me just double check if I'm going the right direction uh, I need to zoom out a little bit and just to see if we're going to be able to make it to Pluto. Where is Pluto? There it is. Okay, maybe, possibly. I don't know. We'll see. I need to get more speed, I think. Alright, so I, I had to increase my speed a little bit just so that I can actually escape the solar system. Anyway, so on the way to Pluto, uh, let's actually wait for Pluto and talk about a few more interesting things about this mission. Now, one of the interesting things is right here. This is actually, if you've played Kerbal Space Program, you may know what this is. This is a nuclear reactor. This, uh, this spaceship didn't use any solar panels that didn't actually have any solar panels if you look at it because it has, it has a nuclear reactor based on plutonium um, plutonium 238 as a source of power now this is a very rare material and we, will, we can only actually make three more of these uh, for the next few years because plutonium 238 is a byproduct of nuclear weapon production and we no longer make any nuclear weapons because of the, all of these treaties that have been signed between USSR and uh, USA, the nuclear weapons are no longer being made, so we can actually only make maybe two, maybe three maximum of these, and after that we'll have to come up with some other nuclear source or some kind of other energy source. But this probe got lucky and it got this awesome nuclear reactor that will actually serve it until at least 2026, possibly even longer. The other interesting thing about this probe is that it uses a really unique CPU to basically process everything. Now, if you have heard about this, you may know that this CPU is actually from PlayStation 1. Yeah, that's right. The New Horizon probe uses PlayStation 1 CPU. And there's really only one reason why this has PlayStation 1 CPU, and that's of course stability. PlayStation 1 is the most stable gaming system in the world. And if you ever, if you actually have your old uh, PlayStation 1, it probably still works. And essentially, this is why they chose this over, you know, PlayStation 2 or anything else that was available on the market. So here, they went with stability instead of speed. Nevertheless, though, even though it's super stable, a few months before the probe made it to Pluto in 2015, it actually crashed. Something happened and uh, the scientists could not reach this probe, but they tried to communicate with it, but it was not really answering. So they had to reboot the computer and, uh, you know, even though it's stable, it still kind of crashed. But interestingly, they actually had to make uh, the actual speed of the CPU a little bit slower. It's actually working at 12 megahertz instead of uh, normal 33 megahertz. And that was because they wanted to make it even more stable and because it actually has a radiation hardened shell on top of it. So they wanted to make sure that this doesn't break and survives for many, 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 many years. And obviously for the next uh, eight and a half years, New Horizons was just sleeping and kind of flying into the distance, flying toward Pluto and away from, uh, from Earth and from Jupiter. Interestingly, it actually traveled approximately 4.76 billion kilometers, which is almost 32 trips between Earth and the Sun, uh, or 32 uh, astronomical units to reach Pluto. So it's actually going to take it quite a long time, and you can see the date right here, quite a long time to reach uh, to reach Pluto, which is not so planet, dwarf planet. Or I guess you can call it former planet. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. What used to be a planet is no longer a planet. Now, in order for the spacecraft to actually control itself and to kind of change directions as needed, uh, it also has um, what's called a monopropellant engine. Now, here you don't really see them that well, uh, but it's essentially, it's an engine that uses a very unique substance. And there's about 90 kilograms of this substance. This substance is called hydrazine uh, monopropellant, and it's basically what's used on um, many different spaceships to control itself in space. Now, it doesn't really have any... Um, you know, any kind of um, oxygen in it, but it, what it does is it uh, ignites and goes undergoes this chemical reaction that produces superheated gas that is then used to propel itself. And it's a very interesting um, uh, substance, but it's also very toxic, so we can't actually, uh, we cannot have it, uh, like for example, if you have it in inside a, a spacecraft, uh, everyone can potentially die if, uh, if if the substance actually leaks on board. So it's a very dangerous, very toxic, but also very useful propellant. 
And as New Horizons approached uh, Pluto, and right now the year is 2013, uh, the first images uh, of Pluto show that it's actually a lot larger than we thought. It's actually approximately 2,370 um, kilometers or uh, 1,473 miles in diameter. And it's, it's uh, officially now the largest dwarf planet, because before we thought Eris, which is a slightly um, farther away dwarf planet, I don't know if I can find it right now, it's actually really, really far away. Uh, where is it? Uh, there it is. Eris is right here. And we, we actually thought that this was the largest uh, dwarf planet. We weren't really sure. But now we are sure that it's not Eris at all. It's actually Pluto. But at the same time, what this means is that Pluto must be a little bit less dense than we thought, which means that it must have a lot more ice on its, uh, in its inside and also on its surface, as opposed to having um, harder rocks. So it's more icy than we thought. Now we're about to approach it soon, it's already almost 2014, and let me just talk about something else. So, the other cool thing about this particular probe is that it doesn't actually just carry uh, all kinds of scientific stuff to, to do science, but it also actually has uh, the ashes of a, a person. There's actually, I don't know if you can see it here, oh, let's, let me see if I can actually find it, where this capsule is. Okay, we can't really see it because it's a little bit too dark, but somewhere on the, on the surface there's a, a little capsule that contains the ashes of a person called Clyde Tombaugh, which is basically the person who found and identified Pluto in 1930. So he was the discoverer of Pluto and his ashes are on board. And that's on top of uh, the American flag and I think there's like a few little tidbits about human history and so on. Okay, so it looks like I actually calculated this quite well because it's, uh, we actually might even pass by Pluto, but instead of doing this very, very roughly and manually, there is actually a simulation that has been added in the previous version of this game, which really demonstrates this very well and how this mission actually was executed. But look at that, I, I'm really proud of myself. I actually managed to slingshot myself relatively accurately toward Pluto. And so, oh no, the year's already 2016. Okay, maybe maybe not so lucky after all. Uh, but anyway, so let's actually take a look at this simulation. We're gonna quit this because I don't think I'll be able to... Oh, wait a second. Let's actually see how close we get. I'm super curious now, but I'm, I'm about to show you the actual simulation that shows this with a little bit more detail and a little bit more accuracy. Interestingly though, after the spacecraft was launched, uh, only a few months later, uh, we discovered that Pluto had a lot more moons. So at first we only knew about Charon, which actually New Horizons took a really nice picture of, but at first we only knew about Charon, which is uh, probably the biggest... Um, let me just zoom in for a second. It's the biggest uh, moon uh, of Pluto and it actually uh, it creates something called the Berry Center. So this is actually where these two uh, these two particular moons orbit around. So this right here is the orbital center where so basically Pluto kind of goes like this, and then Charon goes around that Berry Center as well, uh, more of a circle, I guess. Uh, and so uh, it's large enough to create this type of uh, um, really interesting phenomenon. But there's also these two other moons we discovered a few months after the launch, and this was Nix and Styx. So we didn't really know about them before. But we did discover them uh, a few months after the launch of New Horizons. And then, uh, a few months before uh, New Horizons actually reached Pluto, we discovered two more, Kerberos and Hydra. And uh, of course this created a bit of a problem, because now New Horizons could have actually smashed into them. So the NASA scientists had to recalculate its trajectory and try to make sure that it doesn't collapse into anything and keeps going on its trajectory out of the solar system and possibly on uh, discovering other things in the outer solar system. Now at this point, uh, New Horizons is actually moving really, really fast uh, in, in relation to Pluto. So fast as a matter of fact that it only took it about three minutes to pass across Pluto's surface. Not even surface, just uh, far away from Pluto. So at, at that point you had to take pictures really, really quickly. And so what New Horizons did is actually snap a bunch of shots, probably like, you know, hundreds of different shots. And then it kept, uh, kept those uh, pictures in its memory. And now for the next few months, it's going to be transferring those shots to Earth because its transfer speed is really slow. It's only about two kilobytes per second, which is ridiculously slow. Uh, back in the days, I think you used to have 36 uh, kilo, kilobits per second uh, if you had dial-up. So this is actually even slower than dial-up. And that's because of the distance. It's so, so far away. And the antenna is uh, so tiny in comparison to the distances that need to be covered that uh, transmitting so much data will take months. 
But luckily, uh, very recently, we we actually were able to detect um, a bit of an atmosphere around Pluto. So now we know that there's actually nit nitrogen and also uh, a bit of a methane um, atmosphere around Pluto, which kind of is probably because of sublimation. So there's all, the, all this ice on, this, on its surface that sublimes and essentially escapes into the atmosphere when Pluto is closer to the Sun. And then it kind of lands back on the surface when Pluto is farther away from the Sun. Uh, that's of course a theory, So, but at least we know that there is a bit of an atmosphere. And we also know that its surface is geologically active because um, we were not be, uh, able to detect any... Oh, here, I'm going to actually slow this down for a second, just so it's a little bit more accurate. We were not able to detect any kind of uh, craters, or not that many craters at least, on the surface when we took a picture of Pluto. So we know that there's something going on, this planet, mu uh, not planet, I'm sorry, dwarf planet must be geologically active because uh, these craters, they're not actually there. They it doesn't really have that many craters, which is really interesting because a lot of people always thought that uh, Pluto would be covered with craters. And essentially this is what the mission was like. So we're right now basically reaching the, uh, and it's uh, July 14th, we're reaching the, uh, closest point to Pluto, this is when um, New Horizons took a lot of really good pictures of its surface and then it basically flew past it at a speed of about, about 6 kilometers per second, possibly even higher than that, and flew past it, flew away from it and escaped into the outer reaches of space. Now, the mission, like I said, is not actually over. Um, New Horizons will actually be projected into a new trajectory Well, it will try to encounter other dwarf planets. So there's actually still a debate going on about which next uh, dwarf planet it should visit. Uh, but depending on, uh, you know, different mathematical calculations and how much fuel it has left, and this is Pluto, say goodbye to Pluto and its moons. But yeah, def depending on the actual uh, trajectory and of those other dwarf planets and the calculations needed and the fuel left, we may have to uh, either choose just one or possibly choose none because we don't really know if we can even uh, pass by close enough to one of those other dwarf planets. And I'm going to just enable orbits and just to show you. Um, so we are right here and just to show you what we can actually uh, get to in the next few years. So we can possibly pass by this one that doesn't actually have a name yet. Uh, we can also possibly reach a few other ones that we haven't really explored or even discovered. And so if we just keep going on the same trajectory, and New Horizons is still right here. Here we go, months per second, good. Uh, so as it keeps flying away, it will definitely pass by this object, which doesn't have a name yet. Uh, but it may also be able to, if we change the trajectory, possibly even uh, pass by Ares. So this would be really interesting because if we can change the trajectory somehow and if there's enough fuel, we maybe even take a really nice picture of Ares, which we still haven't really seen except for maybe one mega, uh, one pixel in a, in a kind of a uh, distant picture that uh, I think it was Hubble telescope that actually took. So Ares is still a mystery. We know it's probably very, very large as well, but at the same time we might we may also discover some new and some really awesome um, dwarf planets on, on on the route that we have currently. So there might be new uh, dwarf planets discovered and we might even visit them with New Horizons before 2026. And the year now is 2044. I believe the reactor has given away and we can no longer take any new information or take new pictures from this particular spacecraft. But it's, you know, it's going to be flying into other uh, solar system just like the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 and will hopefully one day be found by some crazy intelligent life uh, that will pick it up and bring it back to Earth and hopefully not destroy us in the meanwhile. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. This has been What the Math with Universe Sandbox 2 and a little bit more of facts and tidbits about the New Horizons mission that reached Pluto in July of 2015. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of the other Universe Sandbox 2 videos uh, and the link for, this, for those videos is in the description right now. All right, thank you guys and came you later. Let's zoom into Earth and see how our beautiful planet is doing. Anyway guys, thank you for watching and game you later, bye bye.